Jeff from Coding Blocks here, talking about a new project I'm working on that's just kind of fun. Um, I'm making a little roguelike game, which if you're not familiar with the term, it's a little bit contentious, but basically it just means that um, generating things like levels randomly, bad guys randomly, I've got turn-based play, so I can um, think about things strategically and take my time if I want to decide what move to make. Um, Tile-based graphics, uh, a lot of these games have ASCII art. That doesn't really appeal to me. Um, you know, it's very traditional and it's nice to not be able to focus on graphics and just focus on the, like the various systems of play but um, I need graphics so that's what I'm doing. Another hallmark is permadeath so once this little guy dies uh, he's going to be dead and any sort of items or experience or anything any treasures that I picked up along the way are all going to be completely lost and the idea is to basically just to give you some real consequences to kind of you know make those decisions that you make have a weight um, in a way that a lot of modern games have, have kind of lost when you can just kind of load a save or, or um, you know keep playing and eventually beat the game and uh, yeah so I mean that's it for the game you can see um, you know just walking around a little bit uh, this is a random dungeon so if I hit play again then we're gonna see a different dungeon with different bad guys in it. Uh, there's not a lot of variety now, and particularly you can tell that my walls and floors don't even really make a lot of sense. And so I want things to look, you know, like spaceships or like uh, open world or you know the surface of the moon or or whatever different things. Um, the battle system is really uh, simple. I used to have a console here, but I kind of want to release this on mobile, maybe. So I didn't want to show too much information, and it just didn't really seem that valuable. I'd like to do something like showing the you know um, state changes, like maybe a little text following up and down. I want to have my actual EP, HP changing. Maybe I can make the guys red if they're getting close to death. I don't know, something like that. But I think that uh, I might pass on the console even though I spent many hours getting it working. Um, and actually, uh, I should say, I've only been working on this game for like a week and a half. And may, most of that has been me struggling with learning to use Unity because it's just a different paradigm for me and, wor and works very different than what I'm expected expecting. And if you're interested in this video, I can show you more about the game and more about the systems of play here. And so I just wanted to kind of give you a little teaser and see if there was any sort of interest before I put more time into that. So um, that's about it for the game. I'm going to play a little bit more just so you can see some other stuff and talk about some of these systems, but we'll keep this one short. So we can see that the, um, the lighting, my field of view changes based on my position and I've got a little site radius plugged in and I'm actually using the Shadowcaster library for that which is something I put on GitHub but Eric Lippert actually wrote the code and I, I found a really nice article about it which we'll have uh, linked in the description here and um, so you're doing some little stuff with the animations, things that's going to change. Um, the actual dungeon generation is another C Sharp library called Carcero. I mean, actually I can show you. I've got the code right here. It's called Carcero. Um, a star navigator is what I'm using for the enemies to find me. Um, I still, I've got lots of bugs, uh, a lot of stuff I'm doing. Um, still needs to be polished up quite a bit. And actually, I've been um, trying to run end to pen along the way and and see how things look. And so you can see, uh, I've definitely got a lot of debt, and a lot of that's me learning to work with Unity. Um, some of the rules and stuff, I'm still trying to figure out what exactly, um, you know, is. Are, are things that I'm doing to be more like Unity and what is just bad practices. And so I'm still kind of figuring that out. I can actually disable rules and stuff independent and focus on that. Uh, one interesting stat is that all of this is done with um, 456 lines of code. And I'm sure if I went through, cleaned up and knew what I was doing, that would probably be more like 300. So that's not a lot of code. I'm heavily leveraging Unity. And uh, I bought sprites. I can show you what that looks like. Um, I haven't added music yet, but that's going to be really easy too. It's just a matter of finding some music that I like that doesn't cost too much. Uh, sprites. I've got these sprite sheets. So we expand this. We've got all sorts of bad guys and stuff, and we pop that open. We can see, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. You know, if you, like this guy in the, the top left, these first two spots here, if you toggle between those, it's going to look like they're moving up and down, right? Showing some action. So things don't look so static. And uh, so. Uh, I actually got a, a ton of stuff, everything for the, uh, you know, for the interface, uh, tons of bad guys. I mean, look at that. 
So I can do all sorts of cool stuff like uh, character selection screens or status effects. or um, It's really just a matter of how much time I want to put into it. So um, that is pretty cool. And oh, let me show you the sprite editor. Oops. So if we go into here, you can actually see how you uh, woo, can select different sprites. And you can actually, um, er, sorry, I'm on a remote desktop into Windows. And on my Mac and so I'm getting kind of messed up on my shortcuts here but um, you can even take images like this and tell it that it's a nine table sprite and so that um, you can scale this as big as you want and that's what I'm doing the UI here and it knows to only do the corners and not stretch the corners and only stretch these uh, middle areas and so that's really cool it makes things just really simple unity is just wonderful for making games it's highly tailored to do that and while I you know encourage everyone to make things from scratch and learn and, and have fun um, it's also nice to get some stuff done and sometimes and learn from the other patterns that people or tools with um, more experience in that domain how they do things and so uh, do it every way right and do it from scratch do it with a tool do it from scratch again do it from scratch again <laughs> anyway do it with a tool all right um, if you guys are interested Next time I can maybe talk a little bit more about the code and how we are generating dungeons via config objects and I've got a little dungeon master for uh, controlling the bad guys and, and uh, basically just taking care of the dungeon and I can show you how I've got that stuff uh, set up to actually uh, interact with entity. It does kind of a, a cool um, a, a cool, I guess, almost like a dependency injection um, where you can basically configure your scripts via their public fields. Um, anyway, um, I'd love to do talk about it more. If you're interested, so let me know in the comments or give me a thumbs up or something if this is something you're interested in hearing more about. All right, signing off.